Josie Altador News is taking over everything. Uh, our producer, Rich, put together a 15-bullet timeline of everything that has gone on with Josie Altador since May 22nd of 2021, which started with the uh, fight with Chris Armas down in Orlando when he was sent away from the team. Then he was brought back. Then he Armas was let go. Then Josie was back in training. Then Josie played. Then he had foot surgery. Then he plays again. Then TFC buys out his contract as Bob Bradley takes over. Then he goes to New England. The New England sells Adam Buxa. He still doesn't play. They buy Veroni. He's still not really playing. Then he has the disagreement out at NYCFC. And now he is headed to Mexico, officially announced that he will be a Puebla player through December on loan. Sort of what has been your reaction and takeaway to the news and, and everything that's happened uh, overall? First off, I, I look at this in one way as a former player, just like from Josie Altador's point of view, because that, there's a lot happening here. But I do think there are moments where he, and in reality, he's in control of all of this, right? And mm -hmm. in a lot of the things, it sounds like there is some added extra business on the side within the team, within the coaches. Um, but I think the best part about all of this is Josie Altador has control over what he can do, which is, is he going to training every single day and performing and, and acting like he wants to be there? And I think this has been a move that has been talked about for so long. And so maybe mm -hmm. this is the move that allows him to really be the Josie we know that he can be. And I think that's what everybody kind of wants. You know, I know that there's going to be people that are always contradictory to that, but having a in form Josie Altador is fun to watch. Yeah. And I think it is going to be an interesting challenge going to Liga MX. And, um, you know, I'm not, I'm not super familiar with the ins and outs of every team and, and, but I know the gist of that league. And I think it, it will be an opportunity for him to be a star. And can he take those reins again? And can he stay healthy to take mm -hmm. those reins and have a good push. Um, I heard you guys talking about it on extra time. Like, can he make his way into? The yeah, I don't want to do that. I don't think he I, can, but yeah, I, I, I think that he just, I think for him, it's a, a move that hopefully lets him feel like he's a little bit in control. And, and that's, I yeah. think as from a player's perspective, a good place to start. And then he can build off of that. He is one of the five or six greatest players in U.S. men's national team history. He is an elite goal scorer. He is a soccer genius. He's got incredible feet. Um, he's a great finisher. He has, as you said, he hasn't been healthy. It hasn't gone the way it should. You'd like for there to be a moment where you get that. It seems like he wants that last bit of feeling like himself. And if he can get that, then he can decide when he's done. And this feels like the opportunity. It's a less physical league. Uh, you have to cover less ground because the game's a bit more truncated of so defenders defend, attackers attack, and there's a ton of openings. Like he, if he is healthy and able to do some of the things he does well, he should score a bunch of goals uh, down in Mexico. And I said it, I've said it now for 24 hours, but he is one of the faces of the U.S. men's national team. He is fluent in Spanish. He is going to be a huge deal the entire time he's down there. That's, I think, why the rumors have been happening so long and being connected is because so many people want this and it has so much potential. Um, Demarcus Beasley, former Pueblo player, Hercules Gomez, former Pueblo player. So some good experience with USMNT players as well. It's, it, it's wild. Uh, the one thing I went back to yesterday is I still don't think this was the wrong move to bring him in for the revs or himself. Like the move still made sense. It just didn't work. Right. And and that happens sometimes, but I think there's so many things just didn't work for the revs or haven't worked at the beginning of this year that it makes sense um, to move too, right? Because it hasn't been going the, the right way. So when you're at that point in your career and there are things that you still want to accomplish when it comes to what you think you can do in a different league, I, I think it's a great move. I think it relieves a little bit for – it's a little bit of a relief for the, the Revs. They can almost mm -hmm. start fresh with these this new player coming in, and they can let Josie go to Mexico and give it a shot there. And if he plays well, I think the assumption is they'll be able to sell him or move him on after the season, especially if he does play in a World Cup. The reason I don't want to bring that up, by the way, is – we did this last time when he came to the Revs. It's too much. Let him get healthy. Let him play. And that's kind of what I was trying to say at the beginning, too, is like, 
I think about it from a player's point of view, and I didn't really articulate this, but like there will always be extreme amount of pressure on Josie Altidore right. because of who he is, which right. is rightfully so. Like he has been the goal scorer for the U S for a long time, but I think it's sometimes a little bit, I tried to take a step back and say, okay, let's just let him, you know, with a lot of different players like that, not try to add pressure onto the situation that already has pressure on it. Just, okay, go perform. And that's all you have to do. And they can, they have the control to do that and do their best at um, the effort that they give day in, day out and just not adding anything extra to it. So yeah, we'll see how it goes. And I, Mm -hmm. I wish him the best because I do want, you know, it's fun when we get to watch Josie play at the level that we know he can play at. I am a Josie stan. I also love tennis. I'm a Sloan Stevens stan. I go see her at the U.S. Open every year. So I am stoked for Josie. Yeah, she's the best. I'm, I'm stoked for Josie. I'm stoked for what this could be for him. I'm also just excited for CONCACAF. Like, I think this could be a cool moment in the history of CONCACAF where we land and try to do it, but, like, USMNT star goes down there, is a face of this, sort of connects the two communities even more as we have Leagues Cup coming up and all of that. Yeah, and what if, Goss, like, he does so well down there, then he plays in the the All-Star game next year? Oh, I love that. 